Part 3. Cavalry Attacks on the Flanks The cavalry was also active on July 3. There were cavalry battles on north and south ends of the battlefield and also to the west, north of Fairfield. This map shows an overview. It covers the area around Gettysburg, and I'll use this map to show cavalry movements on the 3rd. And you see here the situation around dawn on July 3. First, let's look at the participants. Here's an org chart for the Confederate Cavalry Division, commanded by Major General Jeb Stuart. Stuart has seven cavalry brigades plus an artillery unit. The three brigades on the left are the ones that Stuart took with him on his ride around the Army of the Potomac starting on June 25. They had only returned to Lee's army the night before. WHF Lee's brigade will be commanded by Colonel Chambliss, and from here forward, I'll call it Chambliss's brigade. Men and horses in these brigades were exhausted. These three brigades, plus Jenkins's brigade, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Witcher, will fight in the battle at East Cavalry Field, here. Jones's brigade will fight late in the day at Fairfield, here. Here's an org chart for the Union Cavalry, commanded by Major General Alfred Pleasanton. Three cavalry divisions, Buford, Gregg, and Kilpatrick, each with two or three brigades. General Buford and two of his brigades were sent away to guard the Union supply base at Westminster, and I'll cross out those two and consider them off stage. Merritt's brigade was left behind, and they fought at South Cavalry Field. Gregg's division has two brigades. One fought at East Cavalry Field, and the other was nearby, acting as a blocking force. Kilpatrick's division had two brigades. One fought at East Cavalry Field, the other fought at South Cavalry Field. And yeah, that's confusing. The point is that Pleasanton divided his forces so that he had two brigades to attack the Confederate right flank on the south, and three brigades to defend the Union right flank on the north. And also a side note, three of these brigadier generals were captains back on June 26, a week ago, Merritt, Custer, and Farnsworth. Normally, to progress from captain to brigadier, you first have to be promoted to major, then to lieutenant colonel, and then to full colonel, and then finally to brigadier, and that's four ranks. So these three made the jump all at once together a week ago. And I've read they were all together on Pleasanton's staff when they were promoted, but I can't verify that. I've also read that General Buford was especially angry that his boss, Pleasanton, had jumped these captains over other officers with more experience. I recommend that you watch a C-SPAN recording of a lecture by Eric Wittenberg titled Union General John Buford's Gettysburg Defense. It has a great story about Buford with a stinging one-liner that must have General Pleasanton rolling over in his grave every time the story is repeated. And I'll try to add a link in the description for this video. Anyway, we have here three inexperienced and maybe unqualified Union Brigadier Generals. In this map, Union Cavalry Brigades are blue rectangles, Southern Cavalry Brigades are gray rectangles. As I said, Stuart's Confederate Cavalry Division was just back from their epic ride across the rear of the Federal Army, and that evening, Kilpatrick's U.S. Cavalry Division ran into the rear of Hampton's Confederate Brigade from Stuart's Division, south of Hunterstown, which would be about here, and they fought a battle. This would be the night of the 2nd, and Stuart's cavalry spent the night somewhere northeast of Gettysburg. You see three icons, which indicate Hampton's, Fitzlee's, and Chambliss's brigades. Jenkins's cavalry brigade is at Gettysburg. Robertson's and Jones's cavalry brigades are to the west at Cashtown. According to Edwin Coddington in his book, The Gettysburg Campaign, General Stuart met with General Lee, 
and they agreed that Stuart would try to separate the Union cavalry from the main body of the army and at the proper moment swoop down onto its rear, unquote. General John Gregg's Union Cavalry Division is here, along Hanover Road, east of Gettysburg. Kilpatrick's Division is to the south at two taverns. Merritt's Brigade from Buford's Division is to the southwest at Emmitsburg. I'll start the animation, and you'll see the brigades moving toward battles here and here on the left and right flanks of the armies, and also out west near Fairfield, here. And let me warn you, there are two Greggs in the Union Cavalry. General John Gregg is the division commander. Colonel Irvin Gregg is a brigade commander, and they're cousins. Early in the morning, Colonel Irvin Gregg's brigade moves west onto Brinkerhoff Ridge to guard the Union right flank. And we see Chambliss's and Lee's brigades move into town and join Jenkins' brigade. And Jenkins leads them out of town, heading northeast on York Pike, and McIntosh's Union Brigade guards Hanover Road. Around mid-morning, Kilpatrick rides west with Farnsworth Brigade to operate against the Confederate right. General Gregg was alerted to Stuart's movements on the north, and he detached Custer's Brigade from Kilpatrick's division. So Custer rode north, to join McIntosh's brigade along Hanover Road. Merritt's brigade, south at Emmitsburg, was ordered north to join Kilpatrick on Lee's right flank. So what you see developing here is, one, Stuart with four brigades moving east to secure Lee's left flank and prevent Gregg from getting into the Confederate rear. And Stuart may hope that he can get into the Union Army's rear. Two, Gregg has three brigades, Custer, McIntosh, and his cousin, Irvin Gregg, positioned along Hanover Road to secure the Union right flank. And three, Kilpatrick is moving to attack Lee's right, and he has two brigades, Farnsworth and Merritt. Stuart versus Gregg on the north will be a cavalry-on-cavalry fight at East Cavalry Field. Kilpatrick to the south will be going up against General Hood's Infantry Division, now commanded by General Law at South Cavalry Field. Then, as Merritt's Brigade rides north to join Kilpatrick, Merritt hears about Confederate supply wagons at Fairfield, and Merritt detaches one regiment, the 6th U.S. Cavalry, to capture the Confederate wagons. That might have happened just about the same time as Stuart's command left York Road and deployed around the Rummel Farm and Crest Ridge. And I'll stop here and point out some features on the map. First of all, distances. Cashtown to Gettysburg is about eight miles. General Lee's main Confederate infantry line is about here in red. General Meade's main line is about here in blue. York Pike is here. Hanover Road is here. And these three features are important in the fight at East Cavalry Field, Low Dutch Road, the Rummel Farm, and Crest Ridge. Stuart could see the Union Cavalry deployed along Hanover Road and Low Dutch Road, and tactically, he might have hoped to maneuver the Federal Cavalry into an ambush and see what other trouble he could cause in the Union rear. He sent his smallest brigade forward, dismounted, to occupy the Rummel Farm, and kept his three other brigades hidden behind Crest Ridge. So let's switch here to a bigger scale map. And this is another War Department map from about 1890, which was intended to show conditions at the time of the battle. And see here at the top, the railroad and York Pike. Down at the bottom is Hanover Road. Along the east edge is Low Dutch Road. The East Cavalry Field battlefield is between Hanover Road and York Pike and west of Low Dutch Road. So now I'll add Stuart's cavalry. Jenkins's brigade, dismounted and commanded by Colonel Witcher, occupied the Rummel Farm. Stuart's other three brigades were hidden to the north. Gregg's two brigades, 
Macintosh and Custer, were deployed along Low Dutch Road and Hanover Road to the south. Custer and McIntosh dismounted, counterattacked against the Rummel farm. The Federal Cavalry managed to capture the farm, but couldn't hold on to it. And Stuart then spotted a chance to split the Union position with a mounted charge south through here. Fitz Lee's brigade charged, and Custer led a countercharge. Hampton's brigade joined to support Fitz Lee, and then Chambliss's brigade joined and General Gregg desperately organized his remaining troops to attack the flanks of Stuart's thrust to the south. A melee goes on for 15 to 20 minutes, but Stuart finally withdraws. Casualties are similar on both sides, but the bottom line is that the Union Cavalry held the line. If you want to see a good video covering the East Cavalry Field fight, I recommend the YouTube video titled the Birth of the Custer Legend on July 3rd, 1863. You can search for the title or find it on Datameister's channel. So back to the overview map. Stuart and Gregg fought to a draw on East Cavalry Field, probably starting about 1 o'clock and ending about 5 p.m. Down south, Kilpatrick was sent to the Confederate right flank, and Kilpatrick's orders were to press the enemy, to threaten him at every point, and to strike at the first opportunity, unquote. Merritt's brigade was on their way, riding north to join him. General Lee ordered General Grumble Jones to move his brigade to Fairfield to cover the Army of Northern Virginia right and rear. And I mentioned before that General Merritt learned Confederate supply wagons were spotted near Fairfield to detach one regiment, the 6th U.S. Cavalry, to capture those wagons. The 6th Cavalry split off and headed toward Fairfield, while Merritt continued north with the rest of the brigade to join Kilpatrick. And Kilpatrick arrived near the Round Tops and Emmitsburg Road about noon with Farnsworth's brigade. And shortly after that, Merritt's brigade joined him. See here part of the Day 3 map from my website. This shows the situation about 3 in the afternoon. See the Round Tops and Emmitsburg Road. Merritt's brigade is on the left, Farnsworth's brigade on the right. Anderson's Confederate brigade is here, and over here to the east are from north to south, Benning's brigade, and what were formerly Robertson's and Law's brigades. And those last two are now commanded by Colonel Work and Colonel Sheffield. This was Hood's division. Major General Hood was wounded, and the division is now commanded by Brigadier General Law. So, a Confederate infantry division versus two Union cavalry brigades. What odds do we give General Kilpatrick and his cavalry? On the first day of the battle, General Buford's cavalry division faced off against Heath's Confederate infantry division and did very well. But this is different. Kilpatrick is not Buford, and Buford was defending, just trying to delay and hold on, not trying to attack a Confederate infantry division. This will not go well. General Law's division is tasked with guarding Lee's right flank, and their pickets immediately spotted the Union cavalry. And General Law immediately starts to reinforce their position east and west of Emmitsburg Road. Merritt was to the west of Emmitsburg Road, Farnsworth to the east, and it's important to note that the ground between the road and the round top is rocky and rough, with lots of mixed vegetation, bad ground for cavalry. The other side to the west of the road is relatively more open and flat, better ground for cavalry. Did Kilpatrick notice this? Kilpatrick's cavalry presses to the north, and Merritt threatened to overlap Law's line on the west. At first, Merritt was operating against a small, cobbled-together party of cavalry and infantry. Merritt's brigade is advancing dismounted, and at first they have an advantage, but General Law reinforces his position with a pair of infantry regiments, and a stalemate develops. Kilpatrick was then informed that Pickett's charge had failed, and wanting to break the stalemate he was in, 
Kilpatrick ordered a mounted charge on the right. General Farnsworth protested, but was ordered to go ahead. Farnsworth charged and broke through the lines, but his party was then surrounded. And Kilpatrick sent a charge to the rescue, but Farnsworth was killed. Philip Lano in his book, Gettysburg Campaign Atlas, called this a uh, gallant and fruitless and some will think criminal escapade, unquote. Back to the overview map. At just about the same time, the regiment that Merritt detached to capture the Confederate supply wagons was riding through Fairfield. No wagons. The regiment's commander, Major Starr, sent a squadron up the road north to scout, and this squadron ran into the 7th Virginia Cavalry from Grumble Jones's Cavalry Brigade. Fighting broke out. Major Starr doubled down, and so did General Jones. U.S. Cavalry pushes north. Confederate Cavalry pushes south. Philip Lano says that the Federal Regiment was mauled, unquote. Major Starr entered the fight with 400 men and got away with less than half that. The remainder were captured or missing. General Lee keeps control of Fairfield Gap, and that was Grumble Jones's particular assignment on July 3. And Fairfield Gap will be very important in the next day or two as a retreat route from Gettysburg back to Virginia. 